Lamborghinis and a McLaren, which will travel through the breathtaking scenery of Tuscany. The organizer of the rally calls these cars living, breathing works of art. Wow. That'll <laughs> Something be Something you'll never do. <laughs> that is, that's accurate. That's well said. And they stop at all these five-star hotels, and then in the morning, they park the cars in, like, the village courtyard so people can come and see the cars. Oh, that's great. That is great. It's a little expensive to take part in this. Girl, <laughs> yes. just, just so you know. You can dream. That's our time for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be careful out there. Flash flood watch in effect. We'll see you back here again tomorrow. News 3 Now at 5 starts right now. Right now at 5, rain continues to fall in southern Wisconsin. What reminder city officials have for residents ahead of potential flooding? Plus, Beloit police are looking for several people involved in a shooting. What community leaders are saying about the incident. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 5. And thanks for staying with News 3 Now. October is starting out rainy, and it looks like it won't be stopping for at least a few days. Let's get a look at your first alert weather now. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canulti is on the weather patio. Gary? Well, it's very humid out here. It feels more like a July day than uh, the beginning part of October, but we're seeing plenty of clouds here to our south. There's lots of sunshine across Illinois and southern Iowa where temperatures are in the middle 80s, and to our north and west, temperatures are in the 40s and low 50s. In between, that's where the threat for heavy rain is. Flash flood watches are in effect for all of southern Wisconsin, most of our viewing area under that flash flood watch until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, severe thunderstorms are starting to develop in central Iowa. Right now, we're kind of in a break area here in southern Wisconsin. A few thunderstorms developing uh, north of the Dells, but we'll see more showers and storms develop, and the computer models are showing the potential for general one to two inch rains with some isolated three and four inch amounts in the heavier thunderstorms. Notice the difference in temperatures. 50s up in central Wisconsin, near 80 near the Illinois state line, and the dew point temperatures are in the lower 70s. Again, that's a classic setup for more showers and storms, so expect showers and storms off and on overnight and through the day tomorrow. Uh, look for a low temperature tonight of about 54 and the high tomorrow of 60. I'll have more details and weather in a few minutes. All right, Gary, thanks. We could see a couple more inches of rain in some areas through tomorrow. As he said, the city urging people to prepare for the potential of more flooding. No sandbagging efforts are happening right now, so the city wants you to know that if your street starts to flood, they can help get you through the night. Jamie Perez joins us live at the corner of Blunt and Mifflin Streets with what the city is saying about potential flooding tonight. Jamie? Well, you know, when I was actually out here a little bit earlier filming, these barricades were actually already pushed into the street. There was a little bit of flooding going on in this area. The rain has since stopped, as you can now tell. The road is now clear, but just because the road is clear now doesn't mean that it will be later. And that's really the main thing that the city is warning people about for potential flash flooding later tonight. Now, this is just one intersection that will be affected. That is a high risk area. Some of those other intersections they're telling people to watch out for are Blount and Mifflin, Dayton, Livingston, First Street, Johnson Street, Third Street, and Fourth Street. The city is telling people to not drive through streets that have high water and don't park your cars in high risk areas overnight. They say stormwater drainage systems here could get backed up with how high our lake levels are and it could overwhelm the system. If you have flooding to report in your area tonight, they say you can reach out to city engineering operations. As rain moves in, we're on alert. We always are. We're always watching. Um, but I think that that's why we're here. Keep paying attention to what our local meteorologists are forecasting and make sure you stay updated on current conditions. Again, if you need to report flooding, you can call City Engineering Operations and that number is what's there on the bottom of your screen. They especially want people who live in low-lying areas to be extra cautious tonight as you are particularly prone to flash flooding in the area. And there is still a lot more rain to come. Jamie Perez reporting live tonight. Jamie, thank you. Next at 5, Madison Police arrest one suspect and are still looking for another in a homicide on the north side. Violent Crimes Unit detectives and MPD SWAT took in 33-year-old Lee Arthur Taylor into custody this morning after locating him inside a home on Horde Street. Police say 19-year-old Malik Moss was shot several times in the 500 block of Northport Drive Saturday night. Detectives learned that multiple armed men were also in that area at the time of the homicide. Taylor is being currently questioned by police. They're still searching for the second suspect. That would be 37-year-old Lawrence Thomas. 
Police in Rock County are asking for help to find the people responsible for a shooting on Sunday afternoon. They say the shooting left no one injured, but it did put five bullets in the side of a home. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with why police say they are treating this so seriously. Adam? Well, Eric and Susan, the people I talked to that live in the 1000 block of Bluff Street in Beloit today say Sunday's shooting came as a real surprise to them. And police say even though no one was hurt in the shooting, they're going to continue to go after the suspects just the same. Pastor Dennis Roser says the area near his church might best be described as family oriented. The Bluff Street neighborhood, at least in the 1000 block, is a very children centered area. Lots of kids in the area playing in, on the sidewalk, certainly in our playground here at the church. And the pastor of St. John's in Beloit says that's why it makes what happened just down the street this past Sunday even harder to believe. Certainly an aberration for this community and, and a real shock to all of us. Ten shots fired, five lodging themselves into the side of a home on Liberty Street, just a short walk from the school. Today, Beloit police say that shooting, no accident. This is more of an isolated, targeted incident. This isn't a random act that happened anywhere in the city. Unfortunately for that neighborhood, that's where it was targeted. Lieutenant John Colton Brune says Beloit police are searching for upwards of four suspects who could be driving a white Chevrolet or a Buick and says while the home they hit was empty, that doesn't make the shooting any less serious. Just because somebody didn't get hit by gunfire doesn't mean that we're less concerned. Uh, with the number of shots being uh, fired. Pastor Roser says the shooting was far away enough from the school to where they'll keep their day to day activities just the same. Although he says it's enough happening in this family oriented neighborhood to catch his attention. We certainly are going to be paying attention to vehicles that are moving slowly, people who happen to be lingering around. We already do those things, but we will certainly keeping our eyes posted. And tonight, Beloit police are saying they're relying on any witnesses of this event or anyone else who might have another tip in order for them to help solve this crime. They say anyone with any information can visit them on the Beloit Crime Stoppers website. Adam Duxter in Rock County. Adam, thank you. As part of the state's biennial budget, Wisconsin vehicle title and registration fees are increasing as of today. Title fees going up by nearly $100 from $69.50 to $164.50. The annual registration is going up by $10 from $75 to $85. An annual surcharge of $75 will also be applied to all hybrid vehicles. Meanwhile, the mayor of Madison is looking to impose a $40 vehicle registration fee, also known as a wheel tax, on vehicle owners living in Madison. Part of that fee would be used to help fund the bus rapid transit system, which is a plan to use dedicated lanes, larger buses, and have more modern bus stations to help reduce ride times. If it passes, the fee would be issued sometime at the start of 2020. It would be in addition to the $28 wheel tax adopted by Dane County last year. As the mayor introduced her proposed operating budget today, it's not so much what's in the budget that has people talking. There is still no money for additional police officers. This comes just one day after former police chief Mike Koval said his frustration with that lack of funding pushed him to retire abruptly ahead of this budget process where he knew he would not get the funding again. The interim police chief says this need for more officers on patrol affects the current officers. It's really just nonstop call to call in many days where uh, officers don't have time for a break, they don't have time for a meal, uh, and not only is that very difficult on the officers be, to, to deal with doing that on a day in and day out basis, but it impacts the quality of service that they're able to deliver. And also really just sort of he says there is a positive. The budget does include annual mental health check-ins for MPD staff, something the department did ask for. Mayor Rhodes Conway is also hiring an independent police auditor to focus on the accountability of the police department, and we'll have more on that coming up at 6. And also Dane County bu budget official officials announced the 2020 budget this afternoon. County exec Joe Parisi's operating budget totals nearly $592 million. It creates new Office of Immigration Assistance with the Dane County Department of Human Services. The county will add another full-time bilingual social worker and also bolster the county's commitment to Centro Hispano to improve its ability to meet the needs of immigrant children, parents, and families. As a product of yesterday's immigrants, we must not and will not turn our backs on today's immigrants. The experiences of fear, of fear as ICE agents appeared in our community, 
The images of parents being separated from their children are the most recent raw reminders that much work remains to be done right here in our community. Now the largest part of the county budget will go toward human services, which includes affordable housing and mental illness and addiction resources. Superior police say investigators have collected a, 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 and are testing a device that sparked a bomb threat. Police say a biker saw a suspicious device outside of the Superior Fire Hall this morning. Officers say it appeared to be a homemade explosive device. They described it as a PVC pipe wrapped with electric tape. And we certainly can tell from what we see right now that has the appearance of something that could be an improvised device. Whether it is or not, that'll be determined later. Superior School District officials say students were not evacuated because police assured them the school buildings were not in a danger zone. La Crosse police have identified the suspect in an unprovoked attack on a Rudy's drive-in employee last week. Police are asking for the public's help to find 21-year-old Gerald Pemberton of Onalaska. Officers say the employee was punched in the face while attempting to enter the restaurant early in the morning of September 22nd. Pemberton has a warrant for his arrest issued in Monroe County. Authorities say Pemberton will likely be referred in La Crosse County Court on suspicion of felony substantial battery and disorderly conduct relating to the incident at Rudy's. In exactly one year using a standard driver's license or ID card will no longer be acceptable to board an aircraft. U.S. Air Travelers over the age of 18 will have to present a real ID compliant driver's license to pass through TSA checkpoints or risk being turned away. The required licenses are generally marked with a star in the upper portion of the card. The IDs cost $14 or $16 for a duplicate ID card. Travelers can sign up for real ID at their state driver's license agency or visit mobile enrollment stations available at certain U.S. airports. We want people to understand the consequences, however, if you delay. If you delay, you'll join many other procrastinators and find longer lines at the DMV, or worse, you could miss your flight. Travelers will still be able to use other forms of approved ID, like a passport or permanent resident card to fly within the United States. A Wisconsin Court of Appeals has ruled that operating a riding lawnmower while drunk carries the same penalties as driving a car while intoxicated. The ruling today came in the case of Keith, uh, Keith Schoeder, who was over the limit while he was operating a riding mower on the streets of Rhinelander after leaving a tavern. Schoeder appealed his conviction. He was convicted of four Fourth offense drunken driving. He argued that the charge should be dismissed, contending that the riding mower was an all terrain vehicle. The third district court of appeals disagreed. Less than two hours, the Brewers will be battling the Nationals. This is the National League wild card game. Milwaukee's Brandon Woodruff taking the mound for the crew. Washington offering Max Scherzer. Brewer center fielder Lorenzo Kane will be playing tonight for the crew after suffering that ankle sprain over the weekend. First pitch, 708. It'll air on TBS. The team who wins tonight will head to Los Angeles to battle the Dodgers in a best of five National League divisional playoff. More to come on News 3 Now at 5. Up next, farmers are continuing to struggle in Wisconsin. What the Agriculture Secretary has to say about the future of the industry in the dairy state as he visited today. And then coming up tonight at 6, former Madison Memorial basketball standout Wesley Matthews is back in Wisconsin as a member of the Milwaukee Bucks. We'll hear about his homecoming coming up tonight at 6. On Wall Street, October off to a rough start. The Dow plummets 344 points. The Nasdaq drops almost 91. S&P falls 36 and a half. We'll be right back.
With declining milk prices, rising suicide rates, and a trade war with China, it's no secret the dairy industry is facing a tough time in our state. Our Kelly Arthur shares what President Trump's agriculture secretary had to say today about the future of the industry when he visited this year's World Dairy Expo. Visitors from across the globe and U.S., including Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue, are here at the World Dairy Expo in Madison. Perdue answering tough questions from those in the Wisconsin dairy industry ahead of today's kickoff. <laughs> Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue listened and answered concerned farmers and dairy officials at a town hall meeting ahead of the 53rd annual event. The expo, known for its cattle competitions and showcasing new technology, hit a very serious note Tuesday morning. We make cheese and milk cows, and there's uh, seven family members involved in our business. It is a challenge. Many in the audience touching on issues like dropping prices and surviving in an industry that is competing with so-called non-dairy milks. We need to look forward, not backward. There's no doubt there's been economic stress in the dairy industry, but we believe the better days are ahead. Purdue pointed to the 2018 farm bill signed in December as a positive for the dairy industry, saying it provides more protections for dairy farmers, including improvements to risk management and an increase in dairy prices. When asked if Wisconsin dairy farmers will survive, he said yes, but that farms may have to get bigger to do so. It's very difficult on an economy of scale with the capital needs and all the environmental regulations and everything else today to survive milking 40, 50, 60, or even 100 cows. And that's what we've seen. What we've seen is the number of dairy farmers go out, but uh, the dairy cows haven't reduced that much. Those cows have not gone to slaughter. They've gone to someone else's herd. According to state data, Wisconsin has lost 551 dairy farms just this year. That's compared to 640 last year. At the World Dairy Expo, Keely Arthur, News 3 Now. And when asked about trade issues, Purdue called the Chinese cheaters, saying that they, quote, toyed us into being more dependent on their markets than, on th than them on us. Well, let's get a look at your first alert weather. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canolti with your forecast. Gary? Well, we're watching the radar very carefully because the showers and thunderstorms that came through last night and this morning dumped a general one to two inches of rain from Madison northward to just north of the Dells with lesser amounts of less than an inch for the most part south of Madison and north of the Dells. However, these amounts will continue to increase as more showers and storms move in. In fact, the next batch of storms bringing some heavier amounts of rain north of the Dells now. We're starting to see some showers and thunderstorms develop over southwestern Wisconsin and widening out the radar view. There is some severe weather developing around Des Moines, Iowa, where a tornado watch is in effect until uh, mid or till 10 p.m. tonight. Uh, some of these thunderstorms uh, have tornado warnings associated with them. Now, I think the severe weather threat will probably be pretty minimal here. The uh, Storm Prediction Center does have a slight risk of severe thunderstorms down toward the Illinois line and a marginal risk north of Madison. But temperatures north of Madison cool off, so if there is a threat of severe weather, hail would be the main threat here. South of Madison, where temperatures are a little bit warmer, uh, strong winds could also be a threat. But heavy rainfall is a threat no matter where you go across southern Wisconsin. Rainfall amounts, this is the computer model forecast, one to two inches with some localized three and four inch amounts. Just don't need that. It's just hard to say who's going to get the heaviest amount amounts of rain just because it depends on where those storms track. But we do have alert days in the forecast for tonight and for tomorrow for showers and thunderstorms. Heavy rainfall, certainly a possibility tonight. Tomorrow, the storms may not be as heavy, but any additional rainfall on top of whatever falls tonight could lead to some more flooding. As we take a look at the live view from the WIC Skycam, pretty gray out there. We've got a little bit of drizzle and some light fog. Edgewater Skycam kind of showing the same thing there. The rain right now, not in the Madison area. But as we check out the Almanac for today, our high temperature is 76 six degrees. Now that's 11 degrees above normal, but look at that low temperature of 70. That's the average low temperature of 44. That's 25, 26 degrees above average. And that's just because it's so humid. It's like a summer day out there. And right now we're at 74 degrees. Dew point temperature is at 70. Winds still out of the south, southeast at six here, but to our north, those winds have shifted around to the northwest and you can see the difference in temperatures. Madison at 74, La Crosse at 62, Minneapolis at 51. 
down to the south, Iowa City at 87, Chicago at 85. So there is a huge contrast in temperatures. And along and south of that front, those dew point temperatures are 70 to 75 degrees. There's just an incredible amount of moisture there colliding with the cooler air to the north. So these showers and thunderstorms have been developing right in between, right underneath a very strong moving jet stream that divides winter weather to the north and west. Of course, you probably heard about the uh, heavy snowstorms that occurred over the weekend in uh, Montana. We're now on the still on the warm side of the front, but the cool air is not too far away, and eventually this front will sag southward as a cold front, and so that cooler air with highs in the 50s will be here probably by the end of the week. Our forecast includes a flash flood watch in effect until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning for areas west of a Platteville to Lone Rock to Camp Douglas line until 10 a.m. for the rest of our viewing area. Look for showers and thunderstorms tonight. Some of those are heavy downpours, low at 54. There'll be some patchy fog tomorrow with the wind shifting around to the northeast. The high temperature only gets up to 60. We'll see showers and isolated thunderstorms. Future track, showers and storms very likely tonight. Then maybe a break during the day tomorrow before more showers and storms arrive in the afternoon and evening and then just taper down to showers by early on Thursday morning and then by Thursday afternoon we probably see some breaks in the clouds high temperatures though only in the upper 50s again rainfall amounts an inch or two with heavier amounts of three or four inches in some of the heavier thunderstorms seven to ten day forecast look for more fall like weather another chance of thunderstorms on Saturday but the good news is much of next week expected to be dry with pretty comfortable temperatures as we take a look at first alert traffic right now uh, things actually pretty quiet out there on the uh, the Beltline uh, well they were <laughs> a little while ago uh, take a look how things have changed that's the Beltline view at Park Street. We're seeing delays in both directions now. Looks like from about uh, around Monona Drive back to around Park Street uh, westbound, we're seeing some delays between Fish Hatchery Road and Park Street. Right now, travel time's 22 minutes on the eastbound Beltline from University Avenue to the interstate, 17 minutes back in the westbound direction. Heading out of Madison, a quick 26 minutes down to Janesville on I-3990 from the Beltline southward, 20 minutes to Sauk City on US-12, and 21 minutes out to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue, US 151. That's your News 3 Now First Alert traffic. All right, thank you, Gary. Still ahead on News 3 Now at 5, a former Dallas police officer has been found guilty of killing her neighbor. We will have the latest from a Texas courtroom.
Former Dallas police officer has been found guilty of murder for killing an unarmed man in his apartment, which she claimed she thought was her own. We, the jury, unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. No outburst. Amber Geiger was found guilty of murder in the shooting death of her 26-year-old neighbor, Botham Jean. The 31-year-old took the stand in her own defense, testifying about the night she says she mistakenly entered Jean's apartment, thinking it was her own. Geiger had parked on the wrong level of her apartment complex. Jean lived one floor below. She told the jury that she thought a burglar was inside her home. Geiger could face up to 99 years in prison. Starting today, some teachers in Florida can carry guns inside their classrooms. That law was passed in response to the Parkland school shooting last year. 17 students and staff were killed, but critics worry this will make schools less safe. According to the Education Commission of the States, Florida joins eight other states that have laws allowing some teachers to carry guns on campus. Secretary of State, State Mike Pompeo is pushing back against a congressional request to interview several diplomats as part of the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. Pompeo responded in a letter calling the request an attempt to intimidate, bully, and treat improperly the distinguished professionals by the of the Department of State. House Democrats accused Pompeo of stonewalling. The spat comes a day after CBS News learned that the secretary was on the July phone call between President Trump and the Ukrainian president. President Trump also demanded to know more about the whistleblower, tweeting, why aren't we entitled to interview and learn everything about the whistleblower? And stay with us. We'll have the latest on the rainfall. Another check of your forecast in a moment.
Flash flood watch. Yeah, and we're watching the radar very carefully. You can see the next batch of storms developing in central Iowa, where there is some severe weather. In fact, a tornado watch in effect until 10 p.m. for parts of central and eastern Iowa. Uh, those storms will move in here later tonight. I think they'll probably stay below severe limits, but they'll probably will bring some heavy rain. Flash flood watch in effect for our entire viewing area overnight into tomorrow morning. That's the computer model forecast. One to two inches, some localized three or four inch amounts possible. Temperatures right now mid 70s here near 80 in Janesville and in the 50s in central Wisconsin. But look at those dew point temperatures. Oh, wow. They're just loaded with moisture. Yeah. All right, we'll have more updates in 30 minutes on News for Now at 6. Stay tuned now for the CBS Evening News.